its uh, technical name is oxythiopiprolin, um, and it's a, a new mode of action. So it's the, its own group, its own resistance group. Um, so it's a product that has very, very, uh, it's very, very sensitive and very, very effective on OMI seat fungi. So it's very specific as well. It won't do anything on your powdery mildews or your alton areas. It's very much OMI seats, which generally in the um, productive cropping regions of the world means downy mildew and, and Phytophthora species on uh, various crops. It affects the, uh, the downy mildew life cycle in four different areas, which we'll see in a minute. The physical properties of it, um, which enable it, one of the reasons it's, it's very effective is it's highly translaminar. It's, it's, quite, it's got a, quite a high affinity for, for lipid solubility, so it will get into the waxy cuticle of the leaf uh, very, very quickly, and uh, a lot of it stays there, which is where we sort of want it to be for, uh, for preventative type control. Uh, it also protects expanding plant growth, so that those smaller leaves that are still growing, because it's already in that waxy cuticle, it, uh, it distributes through those leaves very well, uh, which results in pretty good field efficacy. As an example here, you can see the plot standing out in potatoes. This isn't from Australia, but it shows under very high disease pressure um, how effective it can be. As I said, it's, n it's a novel site and a new mode of action, which is also very exciting in, in, in these um, diseases. There's not been a heck of a lot lately coming out for them, and it's quite favourable in terms of the environmental uh, profile. So obviously we know downy mildew in um, veggie crops and in poppies can be pretty destructive, uh, or if not destructive, a significant disease to manage. And some of these older products are uh, losing efficacy, and as I mentioned, there's been, there's been not a great deal of, of novel new modes of action come through. So we're, we're really happy that, that Enercade's coming out now, and we're also really happy with the, the spectrum of crops we've been able to put on our, on our first label. In terms of a very sort of basic look of, of what it does, um, it has very good activity on, on the preventative side, so actually stopping uh, sporulation, um, inhibiting the production of spores, and the viability of the spores that are there early on uh, are affected by this product. It also, any spores that are there and uh, are ready to release, it, it, it inhibits that zoo spore release um, and prevents germination of the zoo spores as well. So those, those two aspects are, are really what we're trying to emphasise with this, with this product because it's, it's very useful when it's done early and then not once the disease has got going. I suppose generally that's going to be too late to start using fungicides, obviously. What it does do, though, is it does have some curative and eradicant activity. So whatever might be there, whatever you might miss, just from that slight delay from first getting on when, when conditions are conducive. So it, it does stop that actual mycelial growing, and it, um, it, can, it can pull back some of the already established mycelial growth. So with those sort of four areas where it, where it works on, it, it really helps in making it quite effective. The other thing related to the fact that it's so uh, soluble in lipids is its rain fastness. Um, it gets into the plant tissue very, very quickly. And you can see this graph has, has got three colours on the, on the bars. Um, the green bit is the amount that gets into the plant sap. This mauve bit is the amount that is uh, taken up by the lipid waxy layers and stripped with a solvent wash in this particular graph. And this bit is the, the surface residue. So essentially what this is saying is after one hour of application, once it's rinsed with just water, about 20% um, of the product uh, comes off in that particular rinse. When it's rinsed with a solvent wash, we've got after an hour already 80 to 90% of the product is in those waxy layers which is stripped with the solvent wash. So really the main point of this graph is that it's, it, it gets in there and, and penetrates very, very quickly. Um, compared to, uh, say, Rebus, a uh, uh, competitive alternative where after an hour it's 40 or 50 percent into the leaf. So th some of the studies have shown that within 20 minutes, you know, up to 80 or 90 percent of this product is, is in the leaf and it will, it will stay there. Also, this translaminar movement, so the, the true acropetal movement through the leaf, um, this graph, if you can see it, it just shows a little bit of a, a grape leaf that's been treated on the upper side with some Zorvik Enercade and then inoculated on the lower side with some downy mildew. So you can see the protection, outward protection 
through the leaf to the underside and outwards in that area compared to the untreated. So that translaminate property makes it um, really good at protecting that not growth that hasn't occurred yet but expanding new growth uh, is, is its prime um, strength. Also any, any sort of shading and any uh, uh, coverage issues that having that translaminar um, activity is going to help uh, any of those things. This is to sort of highlight the, that, that protection of new and expanding growth. So there's a potato plant here that's been sprayed and what they've done is they've measured the infection of, of, Danny, of Phytophthora once the leaves have, have grown further and expanded. And it, it shows with this uh, Zorvec Enicade product here the red bar that the fully expanded growth has got very good control of Phytophthora but those leaves that weren't fully expanded but grew since spraying are also upwards of 80 percent protected. It does have a little bit of that other activity where it will move through the plant but it's, it's not anywhere near as, as strong as its ability to move within the leaf itself. So if we just have a little bit of a talk about resistance management it's a bit of a catch-22. It, it's such an effective product, but it, it works on a single site um, of this particular uh, pathway in, in the disease. It, it acts on one specific protein, which means generally in those cases it, it's quite a high-risk fungicide for resistance development because it only takes one change or one mutation in, in the fungus at that particular site to maybe overcome uh, the effectiveness of, of the uh, product. And downy mildew tends to be a disease that's pretty good at doing that as well. So you end up in this, in this area where we've got a sort of reasonably high risk fungicide and a reasonably high risk pathogen, which is okay, it just means we have to think a lot more about how we, how we manage it and, and, uh, and how we rotate it through with other uh, modes of action. So to sort of help with this from our point of view, we've got a few, uh, a few things that we've discovered through developing it and, and globally through looking at how um, disease, disease disease resistance does develop. The obvious ones being pre preventative spraying, not, not spraying when the disease is, is sporulating and active, uh, not applying it to, to existing infections. Is a, that's a big way of, of trying to help. In this particular case, we, you'll see with the label that we will be recommending is it, it's got to be tank mixed with a, another mode of action, uh, at least protectant fungicide. So Mancozeb is one that we are, we are probably Recommending it's the one we've looked at mostly. Um, it's there not only to potentially aid the efficacy, but also just to have another mode of action in there, um, just to take a little bit of the pressure off this uh, this sole chemistry. Uh, the spray intervals um, are a little bit uh, restrictive in a way that um, some crops will have a set spray interval of say 10 days, others will have a little bit of a window, um, 10 to 14 days for onions, uh, like normal management when the disease's pressure is high and the conditions are very conducive you shorten up that window and for example poppies being a, a slightly uh, longer period broadacre style crop we're limiting uh, only a single application of this product to poppies to try and stop it getting exposed multiple times to populations of, uh, of downy mildew so here we can see onions will have uh, two applications max per crop year at a 10 to 14 day interval. Some of the, the shorter growing crops, um, shallots, spring onions, the leafy veg, uh, leafy brassicas will have maximum of three um, and poppies one again. And of course, uh, as part of a, a good resistance management strategy is, is gonna be rotating it through with other modes of action, but also other effective and, and um, the, the other best, uh, next best alternatives will really help in, in preserving this one. So the proposed label for Australia um, has got quite a few crops on it and it's, uh, it's a good thing to see. I think there's been a, a few of these sorts of crops that, that are overlooked on, on labels in the past. Some of these um, Chinese brassicas, uh, the leafy brassicas and leafy veg uh, are included on this one, uh, as well as the larger crop groups, um, poppies here for, for Tasmania and uh, bold vegetables, leafy vegetables. So we're pretty happy that the, um, the label's got a reasonable amount on it. The results, as I said, Phil will have a, a bit of a chat to you about that shortly. Um, just in terms of compatibility and what we've tested this product with, just to give you an idea of 
of how relatively stable the formulation is. It's an oil dispersible formulation. It's a 100 OD. Uh, but we've tested it in different crops with different products and there's been no adverse um, crop effects and certainly no uh, influence on the performance of the product. You can see some of the common things. This is a spring onion crop safety trial um, that has been mixed with fungicides, insecticides and some herbicides. Um, the only thing we did notice, the herbicides being totral and, uh, and tribunal, I think it was the totral that just had a little bit of an effect on the crop when we sprayed it, um, but that was across the board. It wasn't as a result of any mixing. That's the only minor thing we saw out of all the trials. Uh, you can see just some of the other ones, uh, commonly used fungicides and, um, and insecticides. We tested it with some foliar fertilisers and nutrients as well. Um, when hasten was used, uh, when agril has been used, there's been no problems. And some more examples here. So being a fungicide, it's not, uh, not the active isn't active on insects, but sometimes the formulation can have some effects. So we've got currently underway, actually. Um, I was hoping to have some results back before this, but we, we don't just yet. Uh, general um, beneficial testing with, with IPM Technologies back in, in Melbourne, looking at some of the more common uh, beneficials, um, trichogramma wasps, lacewings and, uh, and some ladybirds. So for direct mortality and also their, their reproductive um, uh, health, I guess you'd call it. So that's a quick rundown on, on the introduction to the to the product, to Zorvec Enicade. Um, it's 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 highly effective, um, but it's got that it's got that little uh, uh, extra attention needed in terms of resistance management, so that we can you know, we can keep it going for as long. As